RMB Ventures' first investment foray in Botswana saw it participate in that country's largest ever private equity transaction. This is it formed part of the consortium which acquired retailer Camoso. Ewan Gray, a private equity transactor at RMB Ventures, participated in the transaction. Ewan, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now tell us, this is RMB Ventures' first investment into Botswana. What made that market so attractive? You're right, this is um, RMB Ventures' first direct investment into, into Botswana. But I think it's important to get the context here. Um, the First Rand Group has been involved in Botswana for a very long time. Um, the First Rand Group has a significant bank there, a very successful franchise. And RMB Ventures itself has been invested in Botswana via its portfolio companies for several years. So it wasn't new to us. Um, it's a market we know, it's a market we understand, and it's a market we like. So when we went to, to Botswana to invest in Camoso, we had a, a benefit that we knew the market, we knew the local nuances, and we were very comfortable with the investment environment in Botswana and very excited for the prospects for the country. So yes, you're right, biggest private equity investment ever in Botswana, and we think it's a huge vote of confidence in, in Botswana and, and the company we've invested in. So when it comes to looking at deals, what do you as RMB Ventures, a private equity transactor, actually look for? So RMB Ventures has a, an advantage in that we have a sole provider of capital, and that's the First Rand Group. And because we only have one provider, we've got certain additional flexibility around the mandates of what we can look at and the length of time that we can remain invested in, in our investments. So we're not specifically restricted by industry or sector. And if you look at our portfolio, we've got interests from retail to manufacturing to IT, really a very broad array for us. For us, the more important question is, what value do we add and are management aligned to us? That's the key for our investment decision. One point worth noting, there are two ex three exceptions. We don't invest in primary mining, we don't invest in agriculture, and we don't invest in startups. But otherwise, if the key two ingredients are there, it's certainly something we'd be interested in looking at. So you talked about having known the market, having been comfortable with the market and the country's prospects going forward. Tell us about the company itself, Camoso. How, what is this company and what made it so ripe for investment? We're very excited about our investment into Camoso. Um, it's something that we worked on for a long time, most of last year. Um, and we invested in October last year. And the business, I suppose the best word to describe it would be a conglomerate. Um, it is a collection of nine different businesses. And if you, without going into the specifics of, of each business, if you break it down, you can see that there are three main themes in the business. The first cluster in the business is a retail cluster. And Camoso runs the largest liquor chain in Botswana called Liquorama, with 50 stores across the country. And then we also control um, a business called Builders Mart, which is a significant player in the DIY and hardware space in Botswana. The second cluster it revolves around light manufacturing. So we've got a manufacturing facility in Gaborone, we've got another one in Lubatse, and a third one in Pitsani. And what we do there is we manufacture everything from sorghum and maize meal on the one side, all the way out to toilet paper, bottled water, and so on on the other side. And in between there, there's a whole lot of other things we manufacture. The third and, and final cluster is um, the supply and distribution cluster. And that has two businesses in it. The first is called Karyotic. And what they do is they acquire non-perishable FMCG goods around the world. And they supply these goods from their DC, either in Rustenburg or Gaborone, to our customers that are based in Botswana, in South Africa, Zambia, and to a, to a lesser extent, Zimbabwe. And then the final business within the supply and distribution cluster is a medical supplies business. And that focuses on basically, I suppose it's obvious, medical supplies purely in the Botswana market. What attracted us to the business? Well, I think there, there are several different factors. Um, the, the products that we sell to the market, if you cut through the various clusters, there's a common theme, and that theme is the emerging consumer across SADC. And we think this is firstly a very defensive play, um, but also a very exciting play for growth over the next 10 or so years. So we, we were attracted to that theme of consumers buying more basic goods, and that, that certainly attracted us to the investment, one of several different points. So essentially it was a well-diversified defensive play with good growth prospects.
tell us a bit about how this deal was structured and who the various participants were. This deal was very much a collaboration. Um, our first uh, financial partners in the form of Investec Africa Private Equity, um, and they came alongside us and have been fantastic partners so, so far. And then the other group of, of partners, we have a local shareholders. And this is a very important component of private equity is to empower local people from Botswana and also to empower management teams within the business. In the private equity business and in our business specifically, we are very focused on aligning ourselves with managers who are passionate about their business and are eager to drive shareholder value and employee value. So in this case, we partnered with management and management are shareholders in the business and aligned to us. And that is very important. It's, it's a, a basic principle of private equity that we make sure is in place in every one of our deals. And what this means is that if we succeed, they succeed. And that is something that's very exciting about this deal. And we've got a great management team and we're very excited about what they do, will do. And we think they're going to be very successful. And what is your vision for the business going forward? So one of the nice things about being invested in a, a, a conglomerate like this is that there are several different avenues for growth. Um, and I think something that we as the board have to focus on very carefully is which avenue of growth are we going to prioritize first. Our history is Botswana and we as financial investors believe there is still a lot of growth that can be gained out of the Botswana market and we're going to focus in the first little period on making sure that we grow in Botswana, that we service our customers well and we really create a world-class business in Botswana. Thereafter, we are exploring several opportunities. Our South African footprint is very small. Um, we need to bulk, bulk that up and take advantages in the local market. And we are very actively exploring opportunities in Zambia. Certain markets are applicable for certain businesses, others not. But what we are aiming for is to really create a, a regional champion. And we will do that over the next five to seven years. We will do it cautiously, but we certainly do have plans to grow. In trying to build this business into a regional champion, what kind of support structures would RMB Ventures put in place in order to do so? So value add is a very important part of what we do at, at RMB Ventures, and that speaks to our involvement post the investment. We get into these journeys for five, six, seven, eight, up to 10 years at a time. And it's important that we continue to add value in the business other than just capital. So when it comes to Comorso, what we intend to do is add strategic and financial advice as opposed to operational advice. I, sitting here, cannot tell my management team how to mill sorghum or to sell liquor, but what we can do at RMB Ventures is take a step back and look at the business from a distance and leverage off all the information we've got on our other 12 portfolio companies, the information we get through the first round group, and really bring that to, the, to bear for the benefit of the company. So what does that mean in practical terms? Well. We attend a board meeting once a quarter, but in reality, we all know a board meeting is not the best place to add value. And what we find generally is that our management members phone us at least once a week. They phone us not because they have to or they're obliged to, but they phone us because they find value in speaking to us and getting our opinion, using us as a sounding board. And that we do very often. And then we go further and we are involved in a number of strategic decisions. How do we structure the balance sheet? How do we incentivize our employees the best way to get the most value from them? How do we make sure that we've got appropriate succession planning in place? Because when we exit this business, we need a team to take over from our senior managers to the extent they don't want to be there. How can we help with CapEx decisions? If we want to go to Zambia as an example, we go and open the doors for them. We leverage our networks to make it easier. So value add is an important part and we're doing it consistently in many different ways, but it's strategic, it's not operational. And I think that's important in the private equity model and something that we believe in. You and we're going to look forward to seeing the progress of this business going forward. Thank you so much for joining us. That's Ewan Gray, private equity transactor at RMB Ventures.